Well, good morning, everybody. I am up in Redding, California today, and I'm gonna drive, actually drive the ASV RT120 Forcer package, tip top land solutions. Kind gentlemen leaving comments on YouTube. Been chatting with him a little bit and look at him, he's making a dust ball. Brand new machine, I think he's got less than 100 hours on it. He's gonna let me rip this thing in a minute and I'll give an actual review, so. Sorry boys at Upstate that I might have offended. This is your whole package, feet on, head, no hood on it. But ASV RT120, nonetheless, we're gonna give her a rip today and this one's a little bit nicer of an idea because it's got carbides on it. So I'll have a little bit better judgment versus the uh, other one that I was next to the other day. It sounds pretty much like Prime Tech engine wise. We'll get in there and give her a rip here in a minute. <laughs> so far, so good. So far, so good. Look at you go. It's cold in here. Yeah, that's. I knew it. You can, it's probably running. I'm hot blooded. Parking brake. Turn you off. Okay. <laughs> It's definitely a different ride than the coach Takahashi. Alright, now we gotta figure everything out. We're gonna throw a little RPM at her. Wow. Kinda rides like a boat, but it is a definite smooth ride.
So here's the stuff that I was just mulching with this. Uh, I could go out there, but there's rocks and stuff and I don't want to be breaking his stuff. So I just tiptoed through this. Uh, this is some really nasty stuff. Eric and I were just talking. This is uh, some pretty thick windrows they piled. Uh, they didn't actually pile it. They, somebody else did, I guess. But it's a little bit, a little bit much for a uh, skid steer type of a mulcher. But coming through here, I did like 20 feet of this section right there. If you could evacuate it a little bit, it would be a little bit nicer. Uh, but it's just, it's too thick for getting much done in a hurry. Uh, let's go over here and look at the machine a little bit more because uh, that was the first time I've ever driven the ASV. The elusive little sucker. I've tried to get it. Uh, drive one of these for a while. Had a chance last weekend, I suppose, or at the demo, but uh, never got around to it. So finally. He's got this thing set up pretty freaking sweet. I'm not gonna lie. Recommendation from John down here having this big Larry on there. I believe he's got this one welded. Damn, that thing, the exhaust is kicking right there. So that's nice and warm. Got an electric winch in there. It's custom side panels. Uh, they come from a company that makes those. I think he said back east. Then he's got the crate on the back. I will say, very first impression of the ride on this thing. Uh, it takes these bumps pretty smooth. This suspension is nice, but it, it feels like a boat, so it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. And the Fecon head is definitely, it sticks out a little bit farther than the FAE head, so it's a little bit used to. Essentially the same teeth, a little bit different design than the carbides we're running, and it's got no hood or door on it, which is a little weird. Uh, I think the it would be nice to be able to hook some stuff. We had a little bit of a hydraulic leak up there earlier, so we tried tighten some stuff. It doesn't look like it's leaking anymore. But, yeah, he's got her done up all red to match the head. It's pretty slick. Uh, visibility in the cab is still what I kind of expected it would take a little bit getting used to, and just the ride of it's going to take a little bit more getting used to. I definitely was not prepared for, I wouldn't say it rocks so much, but it feels kind of like it just blowing with the contour stuff and suspension eating up a little bit more front to back but he's got his work cut out for him with those wind rows they're talking about separating those down a little bit so uh he's over there talking with his crew so i'm going to mention him in here uh big shout out thank you eric for letting me run your machine i'll tell it to you in person but tip top land clearing out of Reading. Uh, very generous fellow to let me run his brand new machine. It's got less than 50 hours on it and the hydraulic temp got to 130, uh, 131 and it stayed right there and that was wide open through some thick stuff. So she, uh, hydraulic stayed cool but it's a cooler day. Engine temp didn't even matter. It was nice and cool. But look at here. Well sir, you got your work cut out for you on that windrow. Yeah, looks like you got one done. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like one percent <laughs> how was it i made it back home gave myself a little bit of time to reevaluate and come up with a honest review on the whole subject of the asv because i don't really want to offend anybody but i want to make something very clear is these videos are based on an educational standpoint for somebody that's in the market to purchase any one item that i'm showing on here uh, these companies aren't paying me to go out of my way and make these videos. These are something that I want to do on my own. Questions I had, stuff that I want to learn about. Generally speaking, if I'm looking to buy something, I'm probably going to turn to YouTube to find some information. There's a lot of people going out there, buy something, and they'll say every good thing they like about it. And maybe they're embarrassed to say, you know, this sucks right here, but I spent all this money. I don't want to make and admit that I bought something that sucks. So me as a mutual ground unbiased observer i haven't picked out which one of these machines i really want it in the end and a skid steer at the end is still a skid steer so people that are super truckers of the mulcher world that think you know you got to have everything in a skid steer package you're wrong if you want power you got to step up you got to go to a dedicated machine and our dedicated machines aren't you know huge horsepower but you know i know what they are that's what we're hitting at so when i show up 
I'm trying to film everything good or bad about a machine. I'm not trying to walk up to it and say, I hate this machine because that's a losing attitude and I don't care for any of that. So when I walk up to the ASV or the TL12, uh, I've got a lot of information already from third parties, somebody that's ran the machine, somebody that owns it, somebody that owned this one and hated it and started running that one, vice versa. And every little thing that falls apart on each one of them. So finally being able to get to run both of them because the TL12 and the RT120, those are like the two that I see as a suitable skid steer purpose. And like I said, it's still a skid steer. You're not trying to get a dedicated machine. Don't expect dedicated horsepower out of a skid steer. So the RT120, that was my first pick way back in the day. Really, really, really made a push for that. And that's a different story on its own, but ended up with the Prime Tech instead and 150 times percent, whatever, more happy with the Prime Tech than I think I would have ever been with the ASV. Not saying the ASV is bad. Hear me out. So going out there, checking out some stuff, filming my initial first response, I feel like that gathers the best and most honest opinions on the subject because, uh, you know, what more is there to lie about? You don't own the machine. You don't owe anybody money for, you know, giving an honest opinion on the machine. So after getting to run both the TL12 and the 120, uh, people claimed there's going to be a big horsepower difference. I honestly, I mean, I worked both of them pretty hard. Didn't really see too much of a power gain. There's definitely a power gain with the 120 over the 12. That's obvious. It's on paper. Uh, but it wasn't like walking away with it. It felt noticeable, felt good, but it still felt like a skid steer. Both the machines, as soon as you cut the head on, you weren't your stick functions were a little bit off from normal because the head's taking so much of your flow. That's a skid steer. That's the way they're going to be. So you can't really knock that so much. The ASV, people said it stayed cool. It did. I ran that thing for 30 minutes wide open in some of the thickest oak uh, windrows that you could possibly imagine running carbides that engine was definitely being worked uh doing everything just shy of stalling it i was working it uh it held held up to that it stayed cool nothing wrong with that a machine that stays cool is going to last longer but it all comes down to you know not knocking but just observing you look at a machine and your comfort levels here uh visibility levels here your power is up here that's cool uh you got great power everything else you can kind of work with the un undercarriage, the MTL, that's definitely a trip. That's like a little bit out of my range is what I'm accustomed to because everything I've ever ran, just shy of a wheel tractor, has no suspension. Steel track or rubber track excavators, that is planted, that's where it's gonna stay. Unless it sinks in the ground, that's where it's at. So driving the MTL, it kind of felt like a boat. You gotta be careful on the stick or else you're gonna be rocking cheering your ass around. The, you know, it all comes down to, you gotta learn the machine a little bit better. Uh, more time on it, I could get used to that. But, uh, you know, that all comes to, you're trying to hit everything, you know, trying to hit a happy medium on power, comfort, and durability, and all that stuff. And uh, I don't know, you know, it doesn't come with all the, you know, shields and stuff on the back like Eric added to his, and I think those are absolutely a necessity right there because... Those, it, with those on there, it completely revamps the machine. It turns it into a forestry package. And the forestry package that ASV offers, I don't think they're quite cutting it. So if you're watching this from ASV, uh, you should probably, you know, there's rumors that you're fixing that, but fiberglass shouldn't have been a start with a forestry package. But in the end, you're still fighting the skid steer. It's a skid steer. Horsepower is not the greatest. It's maybe greater than the next guy down the line, but he might be comfier. Uh, comfier. Uh, I will say I did like the power of it. Uh, visibility, it's everything I still expected out of it. It wasn't really there. Uh, air condition, that'll run you out of there, guaranteed. They need to have two more levels uh, lower than the first notch on that air condition because, yeah, she's moving some air. That fan is, yeah, it's, it's cold in that cab real quick. But as far as the standpoints as I come, as I'm looking to buy a skid steer in the near future, uh... Uh, you might call me a sissy, but I'm aiming for comfort and visibility. And not only the fact that it's going to be a mulcher, it might not be a mulcher full time. Like there's a six way dozer blade right there that probably needs some use later on in the future. Never gets used. You know, skid steer function. If I'm going to have a skid steer, I want to use it for every little thing that I can. An ASV. Yeah, it'll do it. Takuchi. Yeah, it'll do it. How well compared to the next one? 
we might have a test coming up later on depending on who we can get a hold of but i'm gonna aim for a head-to-head -head battle between the two machines now like i said we're aiming you know to compare and find the best of every aspect best of both worlds if you want a dedicated machine you're gonna have to buy a dedicated machine skitty's not gonna get you there but i'm still unbiased and neutral ground on skid steers um you know my beliefs on the comfort stuff so that'll kind of you know without me saying that's pointing in the direction that i'm favoring but skid steers aside pick what you want but as far as multi heads goes i'm still very much a fan of fae all around clean cut durable head i just you gotta have the hood if you don't have the hood it sucks because you can close complete contain making very fine mulch or you can open it up and just clean out the pasture just flood everything out there and i really like that so then you can get dcr head for it you know uh nothing wrong with everybody else's preference but that's just where i'm feeling right now and if you're in the market for buying uh any one of these machines i hope my information helped you on the subject but uh i think for me i'm probably going to stick away from the mtl because i didn't really like it so much and uh it just it's you know regardless what anybody says about it it's my money that's going to be buying it my preference is something that i think is going to last longer and be better suited for what i want to do because for instance like the prime tech or the lamb track i could be mowing down a field of stuff field of you know this kind of stuff or manzanita and i could just drive right over the top of it set the head down with six inch tall stuff underneath it back drag and it's going to handle it I'm not saying the tl12 is going to do that because it's still a rubber track machine clearance whatever but that's where i'm at right now and i don't really feel the comfortablest you know changing up my format i would say so we're going to end this video right here though but i will put a link for uh tip top land solutions youtube page at the end of this video so give him a subscription say hey to him and tell him thank you for letting me run his machine so i can get a good honest review on both uh, the skid steers I feel, you know, are, you know, the top choices for me as far as it goes for everything. Bucket, grapple, mulcher head. I think they both did pretty dang good for running a mulcher head. I don't really have any complaints on power for either one of them. TL12, people said it was gutless. I actually had a lot of fun running that rig. So, we'll see how that goes down the hill. Uh, we're going to end it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit them buttons, like, comment, and subscribe.